So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for today's training session. My name is uh, Daniel Muraria. I work for Unga Farm Care East Africa Limited as a technical advisor, mainly dealing with the poultry. Um, we appreciate that you are able to find time to join us this evening so that we can um, we can discuss and learn much more on biosecurity and on our focus will be the poultry. Uh, how we intend to run today is that uh, we are going to go through this presentation after which we are going to have question and answer session as we did last two weeks ago. Uh, what I'll encourage you is that um, if you do have a question, you kindly just type on the chat function, uh, then we'll be able to go through the questions. I know you'll not be able to participate in terms of the audio for now. So then now uh, we request that uh, during the question and answer session is when you'll be able to unmute yourself and then you'll be able to uh, follow up the questions that you've raised in the chat function. Just to take you through the Microsoft Teams, if or you are on your laptop, there are some icons. There's one that shows you the list of the participants. There's, a one, there's a, the second icon on top there, if you're on your desktop on your laptop, that shows you the conversation. When you click on it is where you'll be able to access the chat function. We do as well have an icon if you do want to express yourself in terms of the emojis. Um, yeah, so then I think those are the three functions that you're able to use during this session. Without further ado, I'd like to humbly request my colleague, Dr. Harrison Kamau, who has joined us to introduce himself, what he does, and then um, we'll as well get somebody from Kentik, if they have joined, to as well introduce themselves. So then uh, Dr. Kamau, to you. Thank you, Dan, and good evening to everyone. I am Harrison Kamau. I work in the same company with Daniel at Unga Farm Care, East Africa. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm in charge of sales for Central and Mount Kenya region and Nairobi. Um, also, we are geared towards facilitating you getting the products and also assisting you in terms of how you utilize the products and get maximum benefits from it. And I'm sure you're going to have much more interactions as the program continues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doc, for that. Uh, so then I don't know whether we do have anyone from, from Kenchik. I can't see if there's any person who has joined from Kenchik. If you are there, kindly just raise your hand. This is all a function of raising up your hand or during even the presentation, if you do want to stop the presenter, you can as well just raise up your hand and then you'll be able to address the issue. So then, uh, so then when we talk about biosecurity in a nutshell, um, there are different scenario to talk about biosecurity. So with the present COVID era, I think to most of us, biosecurity is now not something new. Uh, you, we know that uh, we are supposed, as as we interact with others, we are supposed to mask, we are supposed to, to wash our hands frequently with soap and water. We as well know that um, we are supposed to give ourselves social distance. So these are biosecurity uh, measures. Uh, but today's program we're going to discuss is a focus to the poetry or in the poetry. So there are three things as a farmer we need to focus on when we are talking about poultry business and that is making sure that the birds are able to grow healthy and for you to be able to get the best returns from the poultry. And the three balls, I prefer to call them balls, which are interlinked, are on feed management, 
on farm management and the health management. So then just as a start, when you talk about feed management, we are talking about how that feed that you're given to that bird processed. Is that feed meeting the required threshold in terms of the nutritional quality? Was it prepared in a hygienically clean environment? Does it have ingredients that will be able to benefit your bird? So then this is one ball of the integrated approach to biosecurity. And it plays a huge, huge role in terms of the success of your poultry business. The second ball is on farm management. And I can tell you through experience, this is where most farmers assume, and this is where we lose it out. Under farm management, we are talking about biosecurity. The detail of which are going to discuss in today's presentation. We are talking about water hygiene. And we'll realize that how water is very important in the growth of these birds. And lastly, it is on the cleaning and the disinfection. The correct way to clean, making sure that your shed is disinfected to make sure that the birds do not get a chance to get their diseases. The last ball comes to do with the health management. So then here we do talk about how did you get the chicks? Were the chicks uh, of the best quality? Did they grow correctly in the first seven days? Um, did they grow in their intestinal health, which you call the gut health? During transition periods, that is when you're changing from one feed to the other, or during even their growth periods, was that transition period done correctly? And lastly, as well, in health management, here is where you focus on the vaccinations. Were they done correctly at the right time using the correct vaccines? And so this is where uh, mainly most farmers relate vets to be in on health management. However, a vet or an animal health professional who consults with your farm supposed to take the farm in this integrated approach. That is on the feed management, in terms of nutrition, supposed to guide in farm management so that you're able to give the best to the birds. And lastly, on the health management aspect of the birds. So then let's not forget about these three balls as you are bringing up our birds. So as a start, um, for some of you who have been in our previous presentation, we have gone through this. Uh, for you as a farmer who decided to do business in poultry, you need first of all to understand where you are in terms of the production systems. So we do have four production systems, well classified by FAO. The first sector, if I can go through them very quickly, is called the industry integrated system. This is characterized by a very high level of biosecurity. This is where um, this production system is where they have even employed an in-house vet. So then they have a fully fledged vet department inside the system. A very good example are uh, the Kentik, who are our partners. So then they run the industry integrated system. So then they are everything they have it inside there. And everything is clear and well documented. Then we do have another categorization that is a sector two called the commercial poultry production system. This is mainly char characterized by a moderate to high level of biosecurity. So then it's not yet high, but it's between moderate and high. As well, this production system, the end products, the poultry end products are sold to major towns. 
So the major towns here we are talking about the likes of Nairobi, the likes of uh, Kisumu, the likes of Nakuru, the likes of Mombasa. Another characteristic of this system is that they are able to pay for their vet services. So then part of their program is that they are able to access a good consultation in terms of our vet services. Sector number three is called the commercial poultry production system. And this is where most of us farmers are in. However, this system is characterized by a low biosecurity level. And you are going to see that. Um, and then again, most of the end products are sold in the rural areas. So then this in your local town and then as well it's sold in smaller towns. So then in terms of the cost in, and in terms of product movement, movement uh, farmers are not able to reach out in, in other towns. So then maybe because of logistics issues, you're not able to bring your produce from Nairobi. Let's say maybe take it down to Mombasa, you know, so then you have maybe to rely through a broker to buy from you and then someone's able to sell it to another market. So then for you as you're selling it to that to to the end user, you'll not be able maybe to take it in other towns. Of course, uh, such a uh, commercial production system, you actually are able to afford to pay uh, on consultation based on the um, challenges that you are getting at the farm. So, but now the main core thing here is that the level of biosecurity is a bit breached, and so then we categorize it as low. Then lastly, sector four, this is where most, most of the poultry production system you're having back with, we call them ushago, right? Where you're having a, a one bird or three birds back there. So it's called the village backyard production system. Of course, it has a very low biosecurity um, categorization. But the main challenge is that, and as you know, that um, vet services back there in our rural setup is not really easily accessible. And especially even the government services are not accessible. So then this is a sector four, and it it is a very important sector because it is the one where we have realized that it has a pool of the most core infection that you're getting in the poultry industry because vet services are not available. And so that we find that uh, most of the challenges that comes to sector one, two, and three mainly originates from sector four. So then it's a very important sector that we may need to well take care of. And that's the reason why we are having today's training on biosecurity. Uh, going forward, today we're going to, to have four things you're going to, to cover on disease exposure routes. We're going to cover on a poultry house, what some of the things that you may need to look out in a poultry house in terms of biosecurity. We're going to see some of the issues to do with disease risks. And then we are going lightly to brush through some of the ways that we're able to investigate diseases in our farm setup. Of course, this is not a training to, to show you on how you become a vet, but just a, a, a simple basic observation that you can make in your farms to see and to realize that, oh, I might be in a, in a wrong footing with diseases. So then to start with, let's start with the disease exposure routes. So when you talk about biosecurity, is it? So biosecurity is everything you're able to see on your screen. This implies the movement of human in the farm, which is part of biosecurity. A good example during our COVID era is when our president um, decided to give us a curfew in terms of restrictions of movement. So this, the same applies in a poultry unit that we need to control who is the person who is going to the poultry unit and at what time. We as well need to control the rodents, insects and wild birds, which are reservoirs for diseases. We may need as well to control the access of vehicles to the farm. So then where do people park their cars when they are coming to your farm? Because we know that our vehicles are a source of contamination to farms. 
in terms of equipment movement, when you are moving a feeder, a, you know, a drinker from one house to the other, how are you moving it and why are you moving it there? Stock, if you are making transfer, you want to move birds from point A to point B, or you want to move litter from point A to point B, what is the correct way of doing that? Control of inputs, flocks, such as feed and water. Where do you store your feed? Um, how clean is your water? How do you clean the houses? What is the processes that you, you do at the farm uh, as you're cleaning? So these are the sum of the biosecurity or disease exposure routes we can get in our farm. So then the picture you're seeing there, these are the places that you we can get diseases in our farms. It can come through feed. It can come through housing. It can come through other poultry, other livestock that you put in the farm. So if you're having cows there, if you're having ducks there, diseases can come from there. It can as well come from people, as I've said, insects which are reservoir for um, diseases. Litter itself, it can be a source of contamination to you, to your birds, water, birds, all this. So then this is a natural, are the areas where biosecurity plays a bigger role. And some of the things, I know they might sound very basic, but I can tell you that we have realized these basics is where most of us farmers we go wrong and we lose out in terms of productivity of our farms and of course definitely the returns later on. So I'll start with vaccination. So then in a nutshell, what is vaccination? So vaccination prepares the birds against field challenges caused by a specific pathogens. And this is by explicit form of an infectious organism or the vaccine. So an appropriate vaccination program, I should say, should be specific to your farm. And it's supposed to address the specific disease challenges that you're facing in your farm. And mainly a vaccination schedule is provided by the supplier of your chicks. So then where you buy your chicks, they are the people who are supposed to provide you with a vaccination program. The reason it's because the vaccination programs start from the parents' stock, from the breeders. It goes all the way to when the chicks are day and then it continues when you have bought the birds and they're in your farm. So then the supplier of your chicks will be able to understand these are the birds which have been vaccinated against this and this when they are the parent stock or the breeders. This is what they have been vaccinated during as a day old chick and these are some of the vaccination that you're supposed to do at the farm. So then if, for instance, you're hatching for yourself or you're buying chicks from non-reputable suppliers, they'll not provide this for you. And this one becomes a huge risk to the success of your business or business venture. So let me go directly to one of the issues that you've been facing in the field. And this is on constitution of the Works. Uh, um, are mainly the water-based vaccine. So one of, the, one of the things that we need to do as farmers at the farm before we administer vaccine is that we need to test the, the birds for around one five before administration of the vaccine. Number two is that we may need to calculate the amount of water that bird consumes in two hours. So that you can know the quantities of water you're going to dilute or to reconstitute to your vaccine. Now, this is only possible if you if you are able to monitor the water intake of your birds. But, but usually most of their water intake in birds, they don't have water meters. So it becomes a challenge to 
actually even no no at this stage my bars usually take this number th the water supposed vaccine water not supposed to have because the chlorine options one of it is to use skimmed milk powder which you can simply buy it from the supermarkets and you mix it at two grams per liter of water and this you allow it for 20 minutes before you reconstitute the vaccine the second option you have is where you use commercially prepared place one called silver moon that you dilute in the water at first then you reconstitute the vaccine. Now, as I said, because most farmers are not able to calculate the amount of water their birds consume in two hours, we do have a simple chart that you can see on your screen that shows you in terms of the weeks of the birds, what is the amount of water that you require to make the vaccine. So then this one makes work easier. So like an example, if your birds are between two to three weeks, you simply require 25 liters of vaccine water to make in a thousand birds. If your birds are between week four to week six, you simply need 30 liters of water in a thousand birds. Then and that goes down. And these charts we're able to share with you at the end of this presentation. So then in terms of calculation, simply, if you have less birds than a thousand, you're able to calculate to get to know the amount of water that you can use to your birds. On the right chart, that's a simple timetable to show you basically on how uh, you need to dust the birds, when to make the, to reconstitute the vaccine, and then when to, to reintroduce the clean water. So this one can be shared to you. Water in birds uh, because in birds, we know that uh, between 65 to 78 of percent of, of birds' body composition is made of water. But water is important because the water intake in birds dictates the amount of feed it takes. So it's not the other way around. So, and we know that birds consume more water than feed. And the ratio usually is between 1.8 to 2 parts. So simply put, it means if a bird takes, for instance, two, it's going to feed one kilo of feed. And that is a ratio. So if the birds don't get water, it is an outright that they're not be able to feed. Water intake in birds is affected by temperatures, ambient temperatures. It's affected by relative humidity in the environment. As well, it's affected by the type of feed. And as well, it is influenced by the body weight gain, especially depending on the stage of the bird. Some of the water quality measurements, just to check on the water quality, we can check on terms of the pH, the mineral levels, you can as well take a water sample to the lab to have it checked for my microbial analysis. So Kentik, our partners are, have a fully fledged lab that are able to check out uh, the pH, your, the water pH, or, you know, your poultry farm water pH, as well they're able to do the microbial load. This they do free of charge to their customers. So then please reach out to, so that you're able to get this service free of charge. Um, on your screen, what you're able to see the sum of four we picked up drinkers in some of the farms. Clearly, these I know some of you might relate at some one point or the other, where you find that um, your drinkers are dirty, and these are the what your cheeks, what your buds are consuming. So this is very wrong. So please make sure at any point in time when you visit that the drinkers are clean, the waters where your bars are clean. The same water that you 
drink should be the same water that your birds are drinking. So then if you find you walk in your poultry house and that water you cannot take, just know it's good clean water for your birds. So um, in a nutshell, how do we clean our water systems as part of the biosecurity measures? So then I'm assuming that you already have sold, maybe it is your bath, and now you'd want to clean your tanks and your water system. So one of the things is you start with is first of all is to completely drain the pipes and the header tanks. So then make sure all the water that is there has been drained out. Um, then again, you flush those lines with just one clean water to make sure at least some of the debris are out. Clean the header tank. So then you make sure that you scrub it nicely with a broom um, so that at least you're able to any form of debris inside the header tank. After which you refill that water with fresh water. I mean the tank with fresh water. And then you may add an appropriate um, water sanitizer. So they prepared water sanitizers in the market. Uh, but the basic one is the use of the hydrogen peroxide uh, that you're able to mix in the ratio of in a hundred liters of water just to clean. So you run that sanitizer through the drinker lines and the header tanks to make sure that all the biofilm and all the dirt inside the system um, is, is cleaned. Is, is cleaned. So one of the main things we do is that uh, when you, for instance, when you use the appropriate sanitizer, make sure at least, first of all, it stays for like a minimum of four hours. Um, actually, even you can leave it on and then you drain the system um, maybe after 24 hours, and then you rush and you and then you cleanse the system with clean fresh. After which is when now you refill the tank with fresh water, so that the chicks, when they come, they're able to get clean water. So just note here that um, you scrub, you use an appropriate sanitizer, and then you refill with clean water. Okay, let's go on. Um, in terms of um, <clears throat> making sure that um, making sure that uh, your 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 drinking water is clean, uh, as long as care, we do have a protocol cell copy here. What it does is that, um, it, uh, and what it does in the pottery drinking water is that it reduces the level of pathogenic bacteria. As you can see here, between number three and number four is where these cells are. And so then when you use in your pottery drinking water, it changes the water pH from the near neutral position of seven, and it takes it here to the target pH of 3.8. At this level, your pottery drinking water at pH of 3.8 will not be able to promote the growth of the pathogenic bacteria. So then this is one of the interventions you can actually have in your farm to make sure that you really suppress the growth of pathogenic bacteria in your header tanks, in your water systems. So this, this means that the water that your birds are going to drink are going to be 
to have less of the pathogenic bacteria. But in addition to that, in addition to improving the water quality, that is by reducing the pH, some of the benefits this alcohol pH is able to give to you it has been shown to support protein digestion. So then it means any scoop of feed your bud takes, the protein inside that feed will be better digested in buds which are under cell copy heads. And another benefit is that it will improve the gut microbial balance of your buds. Um, it is a product that has been well researched. Um, it has well peer reviewed papers and uh, some of the farmers who are using it using this product have been able to see such better responses in their farms. This brings me to our poultry houses. Cleaning and disinfection. Farmer will tell you how they do it, another will tell you how they as well do it, but what is the right way of cleaning our poultry units? So I'm going to go straight to the point. So then your birds are out, so how do you clean the house? Number one, the best way to start cleaning your house is to have what you call the insect control. So this is done before even you remove. And why we do the insect control is because most of you farmers have realized that like, there are some insects that are in litter or they are found in litter. And if you do not deal with them, the next flock you're still going to find these insects. Then at this point, it is the best point to control the insects. So then there are some appropriate insecticide you can spray inside your house. Then this is after you have removed your buds on the house when the litter is still there to control the insects. So that come the next flock, Will not get uh, challenges to do the insects. Why insects is because remember we say insects are as well an exposure route for diseases. The second thing is where we start most of us and that is dust removal. So then after you have removed now the litter, we do what we call the dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is removing the cobwebs, making sure all the places is wiped nicely, swept, swept um, to make sure that in preparation for the now the wet cleaning that you start by doing what we call a, a pre-spray. A pre-spray uh, in a nutshell is, for instance, let me give you an example. Most of us when we would want to wash our clothes, we soak the cloth in a disinfectant. So then before even you start washing, first of all soak it. So this we call a pre-spray. So what you do is that um, you spray a light spray of a, de a detergent inside the house and then leave it for some few hours. And then after doing that, you can actually remove the equipment. For instance, if you are on the deep litter system, you can remove the feeders, you can remove the, the drinkers, or if you're having the automatic system, you can actually raise them up. Um, <clears throat> After doing this, the disposal of the litter is supposed to be very far from the pottery house. So then when you're removing the litter, make sure it's quite away from the farm. Why? It is because a litter is a reservoir for diseases. So then the diseases that were in your previous flock, if they are not being um, disposed of correctly, they'll have a tendency of coming back to the new flock. So then, if possible, in terms of planning, make sure that you're able to dispose your litter way away from your poultry unit. After doing this, is when now you do the thorough cleaning, the washing. And then this washing is not washing with disinfectants. It is washing with detergent. If you're able to get the power like the one that they use to wash cars the best because it will be able to penetrate the crevices and the cracks inside the houses. So then this is when you do a proper thorough 
cleaning of the house. After you do that, if you if your drinkers, if your um, your your feeders were outside, after you've done a thorough cleaning, is when now you can able to clean the the utensils, the accessories, the farm accessories, the feeders, and the drinkers. And then as you put now the house to to dry from the detergent. Now, after the house has nicely dried, is when is appropriate to now do what you call repairs and maintenance in the house. So then you find if you find that you've been having potholes inside the house, um, maybe there are some areas that you'd wanted to to repair, you know, there are some curtains which have been damaged. This is a period of time that you may need to do this, and that comes after you have done the thorough clean. I hope you have been able to see those points. I hope that the screen has moved. Dr. Kamau, has it moved? Patrick? I mean, number eight. Yes, it has. OK, so then this is the point at which you're supposed to do the repairs. Um, after. Um, you apply depending with the challenge you're having in your house an insecticide. And this insecticide is something that is a follow up remember to the other insecticide that we did the first time so then at this point if you're having challenges to do with it in your poultry unit this is when you're able to do another repeat insecticide to your house and then you leave it for 24 hours for it to take effect and after doing the insecticide you have to that is when now you do the disinfection so then I've seen farmers who do the thorough cleaning and immediately without even allowing the house to dry, they do the disinfection. No, you're supposed to allow the house to a bit dry, give it a few days, and then uh, you do the disinfection afterwards. So after doing the disinfection, you leave it for some few days and you make sure that you have sealed the house to make sure that the disinfection, the disinfectant works correctly uh, because it's what we call the contact period of disinfectants. For farmers who don't have the concrete floors and they have then floors, there's another step that you're able to do in terms of the floor treatments. So this is in terms of application of things to do like with more seed on the floors, you know, clean a bit of it, you know, and the purpose of it is to kill the duckling beetles if it's a challenge to you. Um, some actually can be able to pour salt, the normal that we find in the kitchen, and definitely this has been shown to uh, the levels of chlorosidrium in the houses. Uh, sulfur powder, not really available in um, most farmers, but as well can be spread inside the floor of houses. Some of the considerations you can have to make sure at least to the level of uh, pathogens in your house. So after doing the floor treatments, if you are having especially the other floors, you can actually cut the vegetation around the house. We recommend cut vegetation three meters away from the house. And then lastly, you need to have a downtime. The downtime is from the moment you started cleaning up until you want to bring another. We are saying that minimum supposed to be 15 days. So then the, this entire process is supposed to take 15 days. If you're able to do this process, I can assure you, you'll have less, less incidences to do with diseases in your farms. So we find most farmers, what they do, they have removed birds today. They have ordered for another lot to come to this time. They don't have enough time for cleaning. And then that flock performs poorly. So then please, 
in your planning, make sure at least you have less 15 days before you bring in new birds. I hope this is clear. We'll be able to share this with you. Um, so then um, I don't talk this part of, of the presentation and this is the disease risk. I encourage each one of you um, to as well take your questions in the chat function. At the, at the end of the presentation, you'll be able to address the questions. So then my third part on the presentation is on disease risk. So how do we decrease disease risks in our farms? Basic things that you may need to do in the farm. One, let's minimize the number of visitors who get into your poultry farm. I usually give this example. How many people do you allow them to go and view your bank account? If the answer is none, or if the answer is maybe your spouse, then I think that's the farm. Maybe you may need to allow people to visit your farm. Of course, you have your workers there. But the point is you need to minimize the number of people who access the farm. The reason it's because this is your investment. Another reason is because when you allow people to come into your farm unauthorized, it's a potential risk to your birds. Number two, if the authorized people have to come to your farm, they may need to follow a strict biosecurity procedure. All of us, we know nowadays, before you enter supermarket, there are all posters around that you may need to mask you need to sanitize your hands at the entrance. You need to check your temperatures. This is what you are saying, that in your farm, there will be a procedure on how people enter it. And this procedure is targeted towards reducing incidences where your birds are going to be exposed to do with diseases. So then how do we do this? We need to have a record of visitors who are coming to your farm. So then have a book to record any person that is entering your farmhouse. Even when Daniel come to visit your farm, make sure like I come and I record that I've come here and my visit to, to do this and this, I am expected maybe to visit this and this every day. Remember, <clears throat> other sanitize ourselves, the gambut that you're using is supposed to be dipped in a in food dipped with an appropriate disinfectant. Let your workers, the supervisors, the, your supervisors, be able to move from one house to the other stepwise, starting with a flock that is young. So then, as a rule of the thumb, in terms of visiting your poultry units, start with the young flocks and then you go now to the older flocks. This applies even to your workers. If they have to work, it is recommended that they start with the young flocks and then they go to the older flocks. Reason because the diseases of older flocks are usually affects much more than the young flocks. So then you don't want the young flocks to be affected with the diseases that are in the older flocks. So if possible, again, when you're planning your poultry business, have what you call all in, all out. All in, all out simply puts is that um, you bring one flock at a time, you sell all of them at a time, and then you bring another flock. So then it is, yes, we know there are farmers who are hard, having multi flocks, that is birds of different ages. But in terms of this decreasing the disease risk, we recommend that you may have all in, all out. This is as well even helps you out in terms of marketing of your products because you will be able to sell all your birds at one time. Again, we talked about downtime when you're cleaning. We said recommended 
minimum is 15 days. Please observe that and you'll be able to see a huge leap in terms of preventing diseases in your farm. Um, my last section tonight is on the disease investigation. So then as I said earlier on, I'm not training here for you to be a vet. I'm just giving you some tips on how you observe your birds and then possibly you get to know there's something wrong and you and um, this will as well help you to be able to either consult a vet so that they're able to give you a proper diagnosis at the farm. There are two stages. When birds are seven days old, between zero to day seven, and when birds are past seven days. Why? The first seven days are very important for any poultry farmer. This is when you get to know whether your flock will perform correctly or they are not going to perform correctly. So some of the things to observe is on chick quality. When you receive the chicks, in what state do they have an email? Do they have red hawks that indicates they have poor quality? Do they have discolored yaw, you know, discolored color? You know, is there anything that you can pick from the chicks that are not right? So then what are the, some of the things to investigate? Um, so then just ask about the source of the flock, ask how the hatchery, the eggs were handled, inquire on how the birds were transported. Um, so then some of the things that can cause this poor quality chicks might be you know, dehydration because of transportation. It can be incorrect um, te temperature set in the incubator. It can be um, hygiene status of the hatchery. So then there's some of the contributory uh, factors can give you poor chick. I should mention at this point that Kenchik Limited has invested heavily to make sure that the supply of their chick is of top notch quality. So they made sure that, that they have invested way, way hugely in terms in making sure that all the factors are addressed so that the chick that you get is a high quality chick. Between one to four days, uh, one some of the things that you may need to do is to check on the cropping. Please reach out to any one of us, technical team in Kenchik or Unga Farm Care. We'll be able to guide you on how to check your crop in the birds. Um, these birds need to access feed and water. They access it correctly. Are the birds, co you know, are the birds comfortable? Some of the, these things are practical. So then uh, if you're not having a touch on how best to do this, as well reach out to us. We'll be able to guide you on this at the farm level. Um, going forward, uh, if you get ranted and stunted chicks, and I know most farmers have been asking about this, ranted and stunted chicks, um, especially between four to seven days, what are some of the issues? It could be the flock, flock source, where these chicks came from in terms of the parent. It can be the hydration status of the chicks. So then these chicks, when they are dehydrated in the first few days, they can turn out to be ranted and stunted. Brooding conditions. So then if brooding conditions are not appropriate, and this one we covered uh, in depth in our previous training, then again, you simply will be able to get the ranted and stunted chicks. If they're not able to feed, you know, if they're not able to access feed, definitely they're going to be stunted. Downtime between flocks. And remember this one I emphasized. If you do not allow your house to rest between flocks, if you do not clean them correctly, not giving them a minimum of 15 days downtime, you're going to get ranted and stunted chicks. Disease challenges. So then we know there are some diseases that one of their signs are ranting and stunted growth. So then uh, a vet will be able to visit you and actually give you a proper diagnosis to do with this. These are the first seven days. So let's go to after seven days. These birds are past seven days. So some of the things that you can observe in these birds, um, 
a vet will be able to help you to distinguish some of the conditions your bird are having, whether they are metabolic, whether they are bacterial, whether they are viral, fungal, whether they are parasitic, if it's toxins which are in the farm, if it's a stress-related kind of a condition. So then this can be well be advised by a vet who will be able to have a better outlook of your farm at that particular time you're having challenges. So then we encourage you, please consult a vet who is near you or you can tap on our resources of both UNGA and Pentic Technical Teams. Um, so then high number of uh, dead on arrival, these are the processing plants. So this is mainly for broilers. So then um, when they get a lot of this or when you slaughter your birds and you get that quite a huge number of your birds have been condemned. Um, it could be, a, you know, it could be um, maybe because of the health status of the flock, you know, maybe possibly the ones who handle the birds are not doing it correctly. Uh, maybe you had an issue to do with that particular flock. So then these are some of the observations you can period pick it up to get to know whether you're having any issues in your farm. I think um, these are the points that you need to to look out for. Um, so we need to have a clear program on um, hygiene management. We may need to have a very clear plan on how we clean and disinfect our houses. Of course, Biosecurity, which is now not very new to all of us, needs to be implemented in our farms. Measures to have better biosecurity. In terms of vaccination, please contact your supply of your chicks. They'll be able to give you a schedule that you need to follow strictly um, for your birds to be able to grow well. Consult with vets, consult with Kenchi, consult with Unga, will be able to guide you on the best vaccination program for your flock. So then in summary, observe, investigate, identify, and you act on time. So then these are some of the things that we may need to do as farmers to make sure that a flock on top of And uh, definitely this brings me to the end of this presentation. And at this point, um, you can actually unmute yourself and um, ask questions. Before we, before you unmute yourself, uh, we do have, I think, some typed question. Okay, so then uh, Dr. Kamau, are you able to access the chat function? See whether there are some questions. Yes, Daniel. Just one question has popped up from the team. He's asking if we can All get right. the way targets per seven days. Okay. So then uh, still this um this will be shared to you. So then um I'd request you just to take that number on your chat function. Just send our sub message and then we'll be able to share with you the chat. So then if there's no other questions, I'll request if there's any of who has a question, and then you can ask the question. And simply just click on the unmute button and uh, raise up your question. Okay, so then at this point, then I'll um, 
we had asked Kentik to just um, say a big hello. So then I don't know whether there's any person from Kentik who can um, who can introduce Kentik and they introduce as well themselves. Patrick, maybe. Yeah. Yes, uh, Daniel. Hello. How are you guys? Yes. Um, Hi. A big thank you to to Daniel for organizing uh, the session. Uh, thank you for the consistency. Uh, the very basic reminders as um, 